Today we'll be talking more about how to find Forex market reversals since this has been a main concern uh, and one of the most commonly asked questions by many of the traders who follow A to Z Forex. And we'll, we'll be trying our best to make it as interactive as possible. Uh, meanwhile, the session itself is sponsored by ADS Securities London, which is an A to Z Forex approved broker. And uh, the presenters, speakers, however you call it, will be myself, Yagub Brahimov, and, and our A to Z Forex senior Forex analyst, uh, Edmund Das. Uh, however, though, before I go ahead and start the, the session itself, I want to bring the brief risk disclaimer for your attention that trading Forex carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for every investor. Before deciding to trade uh, any leveraged product, you should carefully consider your investment ob objectives, level of experience and risk appetite, and nonetheless, never invest the money that you cannot afford losing. And if you are wondering, since uh, I see a lot of people who are here for the first time, if you're wondering who am I, my name is Yagub Rahimov. I'm a professional trader, trainer, and author of the upcoming Forex book called Forex Not For Dummies. And I'm also the inventor of uh, the true Fibonacci waves theory, which I've been heavily uh, relying on myself in throughout my trading activities. Uh, I've been in the market since 2005. I just turned uh, 27 uh, yesterday. So I'm pretty young person uh, and I'm, I'm here to, to, make, or to make it clear that I'm one of those uh, few people who have been to the trading side, who have been to the marketing side of the Forex uh, activities and who have been to the broker side as well as the, the advisory part as well, which means that I have the knowledge and experience to, to share with you as much information as you might need when it comes to Forex trading. Meanwhile, Edmundus, why don't you actually introduce yourself as well? Thanks, Jacob. Well, as Jacob mentioned, I'm a senior financial analyst at A2Z Forex. I've been with the company for more than a year now. I'm also an active ongoing social entrepreneur with a drive for achievement, and I also trade and work with multiple professional traders and brokers. Now, let's go through the, the main part. Uh, you know, I hear a lot of people commenting that buy the lows, sell the highs, buy the lows, sell the highs. But the question here is, is buying the low and selling the high a good strategy? And how can you really do so? I mean, I have here, uh, you can see on the top uh, over here, uh, actually my own, um, well, excerpt from, uh, from my own personal trading account that you can see that I had an, a position entered on the 23rd of June and it closed on the 24th of June, uh, where, well, the entry was made on GBP Canadian dollar at 1.9014 level, more or less at this level that you can see at the top of the market. And uh, I closed it at 1.75, uh, level, pretty much uh, 1,500 pips uh, profit within uh, less than eight, nine hours period. And uh, well, we ended up uh, we ended up literally catching the high and low. But here is a question. Can you actually do it? And how often can you do it? Now, how do you determine the peaks and how do you uh, determine the, the, the lows overall? This is the, the golden question. In my personal uh, experience, my personal trading, I try to avoid indicators by all means. I'm a kind of a, a crazy minded person who believes that indicators are not there to tell me what to do. However, though, I'm also a savvy indicator user. So now the question should be there that do I use it or not? Yeah, because I said I don't rely on it, but I also say that I'm a savvy user of it. When it comes to my personal trading, I, I am heavily relying on price action. I'm convinced that uh, supply and demand, support and resistance levels are key for a Forex trader or any, uh, any kind of a financial markets participants success story. So you got to make sure that you know those levels and you can find those levels in order to take advantage of the market. And to do so, I use two types of indicators, which are uh, moving averages and MACD. 
MACD itself means a moving average uh, convergence divergence. And I also use something that I have invented myself, which is called true Fibonacci waves. Now, when it comes to using moving averages, everyone uh, has some kind of an idea on how to use moving averages. I look at moving averages from uh, different perspectives. So when the market is very far away from a moving average that I'm looking into, uh, to be more precise, I'm referring to 200 and 20, uh, 100 moving averages. So if the market is extremely far away from them, I would tend to look for reversal levels. I would tend to look for reversal levels. And on top of it, when I'm using 120 moving averages, and let's say the market is trending, each time the market would touch to the 20 moving average, I'm referring to 20 simple moving average on hourly time frame mostly, I would look into, well, market continuation. So as an example, the levels that you can see over here, it's, it is a euro dollar, um, and each time the market basically touched to the 20 moving average, it started to continue on a bearish side one more time. However, though, that happens mostly in a strong volatile market where market quite often trends. However, it's not really always extremely volatile, which I guess you understand it anyway. So when the market is not extremely volatile, I'm looking into the market to test the 100 moving average. Now, this is another point on, on how to determine the levels uh, that market is reversing. You can, if you are a scalper, you could have traded uh, these small market moves, correction waves, we call, in order to, well, act like you're making money. However, I look market from a different perspective. I'm since I don't really have much of a free time, like uh, some of the so-called traders out there, I have also other businesses that I'm really busy with. I am r running a few companies myself. I, uh, I own a number of uh, other activities that I'm in charge. So I don't really have much of free time to, to look into the market. That being said, what I do is that I have created myself a structure that I would be looking into the market from, well, well, pending orders perspectives. So uh, what I really mean by it is that I look into the market from a perspective where I would be combining the market movement from, uh, well, moving averages and also uh, the true Fibonacci wave perspective. And the way I, I look at the market is uh, extremely different. So let's let's give you an idea on how I really do things. The first thing that I generally, uh, I'm sorry to use a lot of I here because, uh, well, I, there is not really much of a team uh, when it comes to trading. You gotta you gotta make your personal decision, and it's also you know your success depends on your I, your your myself. You gotta be critical whether you are successful or you are a loser. You you have to be accepting it to your own self, right? So when it comes to trading, I personally am looking up, uh, into market from an extremely different perspective. So let's take a look at the market from this uh, exact uh, market movement perspective. So this is Great Britain pound against Japanese yen. So British pound against Japanese yen. And for me to be able to determine whether or not I should be trading any kind of instrument, I look into the market from weekly perspective. So I have to look and find a candlestick formation where the market would be moving according to the Fibonacci numbers, which I'm uh, covering these more in depth on my personal book. I really hope that before the summer ends, I will be finalizing, but because of my other businesses that I'm covering, the, the book is always being a little delayed. And uh, I really hope that this year will be the last year that I am, um, well, I'm delaying it. So when I look at, at the market, I find the Fibonacci numbers. 
in order for me to determine a Fibonacci wave. Let's say three candlestick over here is a Fibonacci number. Once I define it, I draw my Fibonacci from right to left. It's always right to left, never left to right. And then I go on the daily time frame because at the end I cannot I cannot uh, trade uh, you know monthly or weekly time frames. It's just way too big. And the structure that I'm looking into is uh, the following. I look into the market, then on daily time frame, the moving averages, 220 moving average. Okay, so I would like you to listen to it very carefully. Now you can see that the, well, basically this is the wave that I, I basically took over here, which was 1,500 pips moment. And then afterwards we have, well, close to 50, 51 days passing. And indeed, I will not take a, any position during this period if I'm following my strict strategy. But then a big thing happens. And this big thing is the market goes, touches the 100 moving average. Bam. Like as I said, whenever the market is uh, trending slowly, the 100 moving average will act like your reversal level. So I look in the market. What do I see? where we have the 50% Fibonacci retracement zone. So this is a reason for me to consider a sell order. If I'm a little crazy trader, depending on my mood, quite often I am, what I would do is that I would look for this day because the market touches the 20 moving average, uh, sorry, 100 moving average, and then I need to look for the market to reverse, right? So for me, to hurry up, which I can do so, would be just whenever it, to it touches it, I can sell it. However, as a conservative trader, sometimes I am, what I would do is that I would wait for the market to break below the 100 day moving average in order to take a sell order. And then what I would do, I would be looking into having my stop loss just above the highest side of the market so far. So in here it is more or less 120 pips. And then my target would be defined based on the Fibonacci waves that I have. Now, when we are looking into the market and the market, we see that it's reversing from 50% Fibonacci retracement zone. Well, it tells me that my target in here should remain at 88% Fibonacci retracement zone. And uh, I know you can ask me, yeah, Gupto, I draw Fibonacci, but there is no bloody 88% Fibonacci retracement zone. Uh, well, it is okay. It doesn't mean that I cannot add, right? If everything or everybody, everybody were to use the same thing, at the end, nobody would be a winner. So that's how my own trading style evolved. So, you can see then I moved just a little further. We we have shorted or we would have shorted somewhere over here to 88%, which is right there. And it's around 500 pips. So we basically risked 120, 130 pips to make 500 pips of take, pro, uh, take profit or profit opportunity there. And now after 88%, what can you do? Do you just close your position and say, all right, I'll come back in another uh, eight years period or eight months period, whatever. So the structure that I look again is one more time based on the, the market trend following perspective. You, you would always see that when the market is reversing from 50% level, it would always touch to the 88%. And after 88%, there is a high probability that the market will reverse. So as an example, from 88%, you would be looking for basically a reversal of uh, the market towards 76 level, 76.4%. That would be one level that you can target. Uh, or you can also possibly expect the market to rise towards 61.8%, but it wouldn't always reach there. So if you are a smart trader, you would be basically looking for from 88 to 76. And then you can also look for the moving averages if they are showing bearish as an example in this uh, example. And then you go on hourly time frame. You see whether or not there is any kind of a, well, market movement on hourly time the time frame perspective. Sorry, the market moved over here, so I can't really just tell it. 
So let's let's just uh, imagine that this was the the case. The market touched the 88 percent, and then you see the the market moving uh, upwards, touching the 76.4 percent. And what happens for you is that you see that indeed on hourly time frame, similar to daily time frame that we just discussed, the market the 100 hour moving average is showing downwards and a 20 hour moving average is turning flat so what do you expect the market should then break below the 20 moving average one more time you again one more time enter the market this time another time you have your stop loss just above the highest side of the market preferably above the 100 hour moving average and then you target one more time this time to 100 level so we just you know each time the market makes a high in a bearish trending market we look for a reversal level to sell again so we don't really look for the market to to buy in a bearish market which would be the stupid way of trading markets however though you know we can still do it but we understand that okay the market uh, since i'm using the the moving averages over here i know that the market is on a bearish trend so why should I be buying with a big exposure? So if I'm scalping, I would be using a smaller entry size. And my exit when, when I'm starting would mean that I need to, well, to follow the trend one more time. So this is the structure that you should be using. Uh, if you could show how to confirm the Fibonacci wave, because I think this is quite an important part. So the way that I- think I'm, you missed it. Yeah, great. The way that I'm looking into the Fibonacci uh, for me to, to confirm a Fibonacci wave is uh, a little like of a complicated structure. I first need to make sure that my wave is a Fibonacci number. So 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, etc. These are the Fibonacci numbers. And then the market needs to bounce off either from 38.2% uh, or 61.8%. Uh, giving me an opportunity to see that level as a resistance or support level depending on the wave that you are looking into so only then I can confirm it okay this is how we confirm the Fibonacci wave for me the most uh, relevant time frames while analyzing the market with MACD is weekly daily and hourly I would mainly use weekly and daily time frames for trend con uh, following the trend while daily and hourly time frames for uh, determining market uh, corrections or overall reversals. So, for example, taking a look at uh, GBP USD uh, weekly time frame, the first thing and the most important thing I will look is would be where the bars form. Is it below the zero line or above the zero line? And uh, this means basically, uh, is the trend bearish or bullish? And uh, indeed, this is basically the most important part. And this is why in several articles I mentioned that the, that, uh, the current uh, GBP USD appreciation at that time, this was just before the Brexit, was just a, a correction. And I was looking for opportunities to sell. And um, so yeah, uh, repeating myself, most important part in determining the trend is where the bars form. Now, the second part is, is looking whether the bars form below or above the signal line. So, um, whenever the bars form, like in this case, well, we can look more in the back to have a bigger data. Um, the overall trend is bearish. And if the MACD bars they break above the signal line, that would, that would mean that this is a trend uh, correction. Now, um, basically, having this in mind and moving on the daily time frame, we can expect to see, um, let's take an example of this wave, that basically the overall trend here will was indeed confirmed by the um, bars forming above below this or below the signal line and uh, from daily time frame we can see that this was the move 
and uh, overall trend was still bearish at this point. However, daily MACD bars were forming at um, above the signal line. And uh, this basically means overall trend is bearish, but this is just a correction. And whenever the bars break above the signal line back again, it doesn't matter if the uh, bars in the weekly time frame are below signal line. This means that the bearish trend will continue and we should look for opportunities to short. Now moving on to basically determining reversals using MACD is just simple and plain uh, moving, uh, sorry, uh, MACD convergence divergence with a price action. So in this case, uh, the price was continuing to trend lower. However, MACD was, has formed a higher high. Therefore, at this point, we should have looked for um, rally higher. However, of course, following the return is always better. Therefore, any long opportunities were not, um, were not advised. And at this point, uh, for example, if we would like to determine uh, the price action for the future, um, we can look at the, uh, what we learned with GBPUSD. So overall trend is bearish. However, since the bars are above the signal line, we can see this move as just a correction. And um, to confirm, should it be a continuation or reversal, so a continuation or continuation of a continuation of the overall trend or a continuation of the reversal, we look at the daily time frame. However, at this point, we see how MACD fluctuates. Um, around its zero line. Therefore, we should look at possible break below of a nearby support. At this point, it would be here. And from there on, to get, uh, we would look for short, uh, short opportunities to jump back into that trend. And this indeed could be confirmed by uh, downward sloping moving averages. At uh, the moment, they're basically barely sloping down. but together with a break of the support line, we would expect them to have uh, slightly um, looked towards the down. And basically, this would be our con uh, confirmation that the trend continues to, well, uh, our confirmation of the bearish trend. Well, additional also, uh, uh, yeah. when you are looking into the MACD, and you see that MACD bars getting close to the zero line. That is the most level generally, pretty much in any time frame, where you would see reversals or breakouts to take place. So uh, you would always see that, uh, like the level uh, Edmundos is commenting or showing, you can see the most kind of uh, instability in the market within the zero level breakout. And uh, it, it is no, not for uh, no reason, because MACD is basically showing the differentiation between uh, two moving averages that you have. And by using our own moving average set that we have, we basically follow the trend. You know, I can also give you a, lo a lot of advices on how to go against the trend as well. However, you know, the more you go against the trend, the more, uh, well, Put yourself in an endangered position. I don't actually need to teach you on how to go against the trend because at the end 95% of the retail traders, probably including yourself, uh, have gone against the trend and have made substantial losses. That's indeed why people have lost in the market. So it is about your mindset, how you are going to be changing your own personal mindset that, uh, that you can stand against the market but not trade against it. So you, you, you have to understand it. You will never fight the market. You will never fight against the market. It is extremely important. However, though, you will try your best if you want to succeed, succeed in financial markets to, to go and get the tips from the market. As you know, the market will, will always give you tips here and there. Uh, and when you see that everyone is doing one thing, everyone meaning majority, it means that it is time for you to, to step out 
from that specific trade. So there is one famous term saying when everyone is fearful, you got to be greedy. When everyone is greedy, you got to be fearful. So that's the terminology that I want you to write down somewhere. When you see that the market is, uh, well, so-called traders out there are, are showing you that they are longing too much uh, or you're following some kind of a terminology that it, it shows how many percentage of the traders are losing. And the second you see that it hits the 90 level, it is time for you to step out and look for reversals. So that's another final tip from me for you. I guess you have learned something. It is time for some questions. And uh, Edmund, does, uh, unless you have something, uh, you want to comment? Oh, I just wanted to confirm that what you said was really true. Thanks. The question says, why not to target the first Fibonacci level of 76.4? Well, in my case, I don't really target 76.4 or 23.6 uh, levels. It is, it is not the main Fibonacci wave for me. I will not really trade it much unless it hits from 88% and it goes up to, uh, let's say, 76% uh, or it hits the 10% and I'm targeting the 23.6%. So that's the main reason. You got to really understand the Fibonacci wave. It, is, it, it requires you to feel the market. It is extremely important to, to feel it. It's, uh, it's important to have an understanding. And uh, if you are not using the, the true Fibonacci wave, you will never be able to use Fibonacci. You will never be able to understand it. Like, there you go. Edmundas is actually showing another great Fibonacci wave there, which is on a uh, cable. And you can see how precisely it hits the 661.8 level. Well, and then it, it bounces back. It's just a couple of pips uh, differentiation. And given the fact that the market was so, so, so volatile, uh, you should have been already, you know, able to take advantage of uh, such market development. And if Edmund does, uh, can turn the, the same Fibonacci wave just the, way, the other way around from left to right, uh, you will see uh, another part of the market movement on the same wave, Edmund does. So, you, you will be able to see how the market actually reacts to, to different market uh, developments. There you go. You Sorry, can... was it just me? Yes. The audio cut off. Maybe a little bit of uh, delay on the server. So I was just saying that uh, you can see when you turn the, the wave around as well, uh, if, if you could please go on daily time frame. And there you go. You can see that in either case, uh, Fibonacci waves uh, work massively. You can see how the market actually bounced off from 110% uh, Fibonacci retracement zone. Uh, even if you use it on a different scale, and uh, how how it so far bounced off and went down to touch the 261.8% as well. And in short, to answer uh, answer many of your questions that I see now, I don't recommend using Fibonacci on any time frame except weekly. If you are using it, you are being a loser. You will never be able to use Fibonacci to its full extent. Or to be a little rough, you probably will become a loser. All right. While many other questions are, are coming up, today's session, guys, uh, is sponsored by ADS Securities London. Uh, as you can see uh, from the trading platform, the, the broker itself is A to Z approved Forex broker and uh, is one of the very few brokers that got more than 80% uh, well, from our testing. Basically, whenever we are working with any broker, we are testing them, and uh, they need to make sure that they get more than 75% out of 100 in order to be approved by A to Z Forex uh, team. 
and uh, ADS itself is a is a global leader for us at least uh, in what they do, especially with their uh, trading platform. I love their execution personally. Uh, I have an ac an account with them as well. Edmund does seems like has an account with them as well. So take advantage of it. Go ahead and check it uh, for yourself. So there there is another question. Uh, How do I know which candle to place my Fibonacci on the weekly time frame? Uh, well, you got to make sure that uh, your Fibonacci wave is made of undisrupted candles, which means on weekly time frame, if you are uh, putting it on a bullish uh, wave, it needs to be made of only bullish candles. And then the, the, your wave that you are targeting needs to be a Fibonacci number which means 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13 candles. So these number of candles need to be undisruptive. They, they cannot have, uh, let's say you are, you are getting 18 or 8 candle, which is Fibonacci wave. You cannot have 7 bullish candle and 1 bearish candle. It will not count like that. So you need to make sure that your candles are, are exactly Fibonacci number and only made of uh, one type of a candlestick. And uh, the next thing is that your market, um, well, your wave need to see, show some kind of re resistance or support from 61.8 or 38.2% 30, uh, Fibonacci retracement zone. So unless you have that, uh, well, you don't uh, you don't have a Fibonacci wave. This is how you can do it. There is another question: Are you looking for Fibonacci waves on smaller time frames as well? Uh, no, I don't look at it unless I'm just you know I draw it on on weekly and then I will just when I'm going down to hourly time frame, it's still the weekly Fibonacci that I've drawn. Not I will never use Fibonacci otherwise on any kind of a smaller time frame. What is the orange moving average? Edmundus, you want to mention? I, I guess it's a 50 moving average you are using, correct? Yes, in this case it is 50 and the blue one is 200. All right. So in our analysis that we are using, uh, guys, all the time we will use 20 and 100 or 50 and 200. Uh, so these are the levels that we will be, will be looking when it comes to analyzing the market. And indeed, just like what Edmund does is showing, he's using 50 and 200, and I'm, uh, I was demonstrating you 20 and 100. It's up to you whichever one you use. The logic is pretty similar. So this is about it so far for today. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, make sure to follow A to Z Forex. Go ahead and sign up on our YouTube channel. Place a like on our A to Z Forex Facebook page as well. And feel free to follow me and Edmund does as well. Uh, I can be reached everywhere on why Rahimov on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever I go. And uh, don't forget to watch us as well on pretty much weekly basis live on Facebook as well. Uh, we cover different channels, different points uh, too. And in the meantime, I just am going to be wishing you a great weekend ahead.